For all of the solo practitioners, more especially those on the left-hand path, I'll ask this question. Is an altar necessary? To start this off, I want to describe a few ideas of what people would generally consider when they think about an altar and how they would use them. Like many things in the spirituality and occult conversation, because very often people do not agree on or even agree to consistently define their terms and usage of what an altar or a shrine is, or even the differences between them can be confusing. Traditionally, the term altar has been saved for a separated surface upon which ceremonies are performed, or at the very least, consecrated tools are kept. A shrine, on the other hand, tends to be a place more than a surface, although it serves the same function. Now, if you ask me, a shrine can be an altar and an altar can be a shrine, although the two are not necessarily the same thing. Ultimately, I'll get to the details of all of that as I progress through this segment. For right now though, and to keep things as simple as possible, I'll say this, that what an altar is, is a focal point for a concept or an idea given physical form. The most common and well-known type of altar being one to ancestors or a specific deity. As I have said before, ancestors are the deities of physical life and that an altar need not be a surface that is horizontally flat or flat at all. Traditionally, however, things like altars have been made upon tabletops, placed in homes and sacred spaces or shrines. Whether they are a small collection of items and idols set out in a corner or a highly adorned centerpiece of a ritual ceremony. That description is traditional, all things considered. However, as the times change, so do the ways in which we do the same old things. A collection of old photos on the top of a dresser in your grandmother's room is just as much an ancestor altar as anything else these days. Where once someone would have covered a wall in the images of Ganesha from the Hindu pantheon, today you can find a wall covered in a selection of motivational art and images. Where someone would have collected various idols of deities sold at a local market, today you can find shelves decorated with plastic dolls from the Marvel Comics universe or clothing branded with some particular logo. The ideas have not essentially changed, but the forms in which we conceive and express them have changed. These types of altars that I've spoken about so far, regardless of their form, I would call them secondary altars. Now, if these altars are secondary altars, that begs the question of what is a primary altar? Let's answer that question. Keep in mind, what I said that an altar is essentially, aside from its prescribed forms, it is a focal point for a concept or idea given physical form. Let's continue down this line of thinking. If we also include the fact that the physical world is illusionary, and remember, illusion does not mean it's not real. It means it's not what it appears to be. Also, and furthermore, seeing as how your physical body is part of the physical world, that is not what you are. I would say that most people already agree with those tenets right there. To be quite frank, I would think it goes without saying, but then again, you never really know these days. All that being said, I will say this, that in terms of what yourself actually is, your physical body is and always has been an altar to and of the self in all of your occult working and in your life at large. The best way to understand an altar is to look at how you are already using one. The body is draped in the symbolism from the theology of your personality, the things you like, enjoy, your traumas, your sadness, the habits you religiously repeat using that body being ceremonial rituals that venerate or work in the service of your idea of yourself as that personality. From the clothes that you wear draping your flesh, like an altar cloth made from the finest scrap of fabric you could get your hands on, all the way to the scars and shape of your body, reflecting the life shining out of it. Like I said, the body is draped in the symbolism from the theology of your personality. What you like, don't like, what you stand for, believe, or would like to appear to be. That altar of the body 
is even nested within other altars or shrines. The idea behind a shrine being that it's a place as opposed to something in a place. The room and space that you consider your own can be construed as an altar, where your body becomes movable like some idol or centerpiece atop the altar, or can even be transposed onto another altar or shrine by moving from one room to the next within a house, the house containing all of those rooms. Your room is an altar to yourself, the same way the body is, although with a different form and density, reflecting outward that which is within the body, but it's not the body, in physical form. The result being your room and how you've decorated it, how you choose to carry it, keep it, maintain it. Even further, your room can be one altar upon the shrine of your entire house, where each room is a different altar. From the altar of your room upon the shrine of your house, the body is moved to another altar, say the bathroom, basement, or even the kitchen. The kitchen being an altar to nourishment, cooking, community, and food in general, among other things. So much so that what you would do in one room, you would never take the time to consider doing in another room. 